welcome and thank you for joining me for this reflection for Holy Saturday 2020. The date is important because I was uncomfortably aware as I prepared this reflection that the experts are expecting coronavirus to reach its peak over this Easter weekend and I have no idea under what circumstances you will be hearing this. So when I begin by saying that I hope and pray that you and your families are well, it's not a cliche. I mean it. Now, even in a normal year, it can be easy to lose sight of Easter Saturday as we move from Good Friday to Easter Day, or from Hot Cross Buns to Easter eggs, according to your preference. But it does have some traditions of its own. There are places when it's the day when graves are tended in preparation for the resurrection. The dead are remembered and their lives are celebrated. It can be a time when the churchyards are full of people, laughter and shared conversation. So maybe next year. In other places, Easter Saturday or Easter Eve is marked by a vigil. We gather through the night or part of it to experience for ourselves that sense of passing from darkness into the light of new life. The Easter flame burns and the lighting of the Paschal candle proclaims the resurrection. That Paschal light is then shared with the whole congregation. Every candle in church is lit and the exalted, an ancient song of praise, is sung. If we feel brave, we can even spread that light from church to church, which does make for some interesting car journeys. Again, that's something to look forward to for next year. But this is not next year. It is now. And many people are scared or sick or anxious or angry or grief stricken. So the tradition which speaks most powerfully, most powerfully to me today is that of a silent Saturday. Not a day to be filled with last minute shopping for food, chocolate eggs or Easter bonnets, but a day to be still, to allow the events of Maundy Thursday and Good Friday to sink into our souls, to absorb the shock of losing not just a leader, but a loved one, to ponder, to pray. One commentator describes today as the day between struggle and solution, between question and answer, between offered prayer and the answer thereof. Not then a day for quick fixes and glib answers, even from those who are trying to ease our pain. And I think we're probably all facing the pain of loss in some way today. The loss of certainty, the loss of tradition, the loss of companionship, the loss of simple human touch. And I know that some of you will be facing the loss of family and friends without having had the chance to say goodbye. It will take time to come to terms with our losses. You'll note I don't say get over, but come to terms. And there is often a temptation to fill that time with busyness and with things. But at some point we all need simply to be still and allow ourselves just to be. Give ourselves permission to feel whatever it is we are feeling and place it before God. Today, the liturgy creates that space for us. We can think of the disciples, of Mary, of everyone whose life has been touched by Jesus, shocked and appalled by what has just happened. We can imagine the whole created order holding its breath and waiting, waiting for God to speak. Or we can reflect on the events of the last few weeks. But above all, this is a day to trust. To trust that although God may seem silent, he is not absent. God, like us, is grieving. You have heard me say before that God is not uninterested in our pain, but that he shares it. 
that there are times when only the suffering God will do. This is what the incarnation is all about. It is not something remote from us, but something for us. For times like this, when we need more than ever to know that God is Emmanuel. God with us. In the words of the hymn, God is love, and love enfolds us, all the world in one embrace. With unfailing grasp, God holds us, every child of every race. And when human hearts are breaking under sorrow's iron rod, then we find that self-same aching deep within the heart of God.